Apple announced at WWDC that they will make the monumental transition to ARM over the next two years. While this has led many to be excited, mostly shareholders who see at least a $50 improvement in profit margin for every Intel-based computer sold today, it left me unsettled. Not by what Apple said, but by what they didn't say. What didn't they say? Let's get into it. Apple wants to reassure its customers and shareholders that they have done this transitioning before and it was great back then and it'll be great this time too. When Apple transitioned from the 68K series of Motorola processors to PowerPC, they didn't transition because they wanted to, they transitioned because they needed to. The 68K CPU was introduced in 1979 and by the early 90s they had squeezed all the performance they could out of that architecture. That 16 slash 32 bit Motorola CPU architecture was done. They needed to move to a 32 slash 64 bit architecture and with an alliance between Apple, Motorola, and IBM, they developed the PowerPC architecture. The PowerPC architecture had measurably higher performance and it was demonstrated to be more powerful before that transition was announced. When Apple switched to PowerPC to Intel CPUs, the PowerPC was done. It was behind in performance compared to the Intel and AMD CPUs and they proved what a hot mess the G5 was when they had to install a liquid cooling system to the Power Mac G5. They never did install a G5 in a PowerBook. By 2005, Intel had engineering samples of their new Core Duo architecture that blew away the G5 in performance while being more power efficient for laptops. It had measurably higher performance and was demonstrated to be more powerful before the transition was announced. But this is different. In both transitions, the architectures they were on were stalled and no real future, and they knew what they were moving to was something more powerful. Apple Silicon is not shown to be more powerful than Intel processors today. Where were the performance charts? What was shown at WWDC was very limited, hand-picked. It just showed you can run programs on Apple Silicon. It did not show how well it can run these programs compared to existing Intel Macs. Just replicating performance is not enough. Like the other transitions, it must be measurably better. Many people will point you to look at the iPad Pro and how well it performs in Geekbench. Well, Geekbench is a benchmark. It's not the benchmark. It is not particularly demanding. Let's see Apple Silicon run Cinebench. From a power user perspective, they are not ready to take on Intel or AMD desktop CPUs. It will take them at least three iterations to get up to those levels of performance. Because you see, unlike the 68K or PowerPC architectures of the past, the x86, x64 architecture is far from dead. They have not hit the wall. Intel may have stalled out, but AMD is continuing to move forward and increasing performance levels and will pass Intel with its Zen 3 and Zen 4 architectures. Apple is chasing a moving target that will take them at least three to five years to reach parity in desktop CPU performance. Many people love to say ARM is the future. And did you know that Fugaku, the number one supercomputer, is now based on ARM? And they leave it at that. Do you know how many ARM cores it took to pull that off to be the number one supercomputer? Fugaku is powered by Fujitsu's 48 core ARM based SOC. Fugaku uses 158,976 ARM based CPUs. So that's 7.6 million cores, more than any other supercomputer. Number two on that list is Summit, which has a fraction of that number at about 200,000 cores, or 0.2 million cores. How many cores will Apple need to show better performance than their own 28-core Mac Pro? If Apple was interested in better performing CPUs, what about AMD's Ryzen? AMD is on a roll with the development of Ryzen. I can tell you that Mac OS performs very well on Ryzen processors from Threadripper to my latest build with third gen Ryzen. The third gen Ryzen CPUs perform as good or better than Intel CPUs. They consume less power and they cost less money. All key attributes Apple is looking for in its next generation of CPUs. Ryzen would provide a perfect replacement CPU for all of their desktops and it would keep them at the top of the performance charts for the next three to five years. So why didn't Apple just switch over to Ryzen in the interim? I think it's a signal that they just don't want to move forward with a desktop computer any longer. Desktops are making up a smaller and smaller share of their products, and they just want to unify everything over to the iPhone and iPad lineup of CPUs. From a business perspective and profitability perspective, it makes sense. Shareholders will like the idea. For more powerful computers, just scale up the number of cores like Fugaku. 
The desktop is becoming a niche product. They are not going after niche products. They are going mainstream and they will use mainstream building blocks to maximize profit margins. It really does make me wonder, why did they go through that two and a half year endeavor to create the new Mac Pro only to abandon that platform just months later? Goodbye, Windows Gaming. There's really not much to say here. You won't be able to run Boot Camp to game under Windows on your Mac anymore. You'll have to settle for Apple Arcade or purchase a gaming PC. If you're a creative person who needs processing power, you'll need to spend thousands of dollars with Apple to get a powerful CPU and GPU with enough RAM and storage. With Apple, you have a certain amount of trust that Apple will support that computer for a long time, and that helps keep resale prices high. Apple wants customers to be loyal to them, but they are not loyal to their customers. What is Apple doing to its most loyal power users? Just look at what has happened to power users of the Mac Pro this past decade. First, Apple replaces the classic Mac Pro with a trash can. Then four years later, admits it was a mistake and will have something next year. And then that very next year, they announce another delay to the following year. Then comes out with a new and improved Mac Pro tower for double the price. And then, just seven months later, announces that the Intel platform is dead. It is now dead-ended. The Intel Mac is a lame duck Mac. Dead Mac walking. This is a topic they will not address, but it's a reality you must face if you are considering the purchase of an Intel-based Mac. Apple can throw out phrases like, they will support it for years to come, but how many? It's not just about security updates, it's also about new features and apps going forward. I lived through the PowerPC to Intel transition. The hardware transition completed in August of 2006, and the last OS update was June of 2011, almost five years. But I can tell you that within two years, the new features and apps required new Intel hardware. Sure, I could continue to do the old stuff, but I didn't get the newer, nicer features. Just two years after the end of the transition, my PowerPC Mac was feeling left behind. And it makes sense. Put yourself in the shoes of a developer and ask yourself this question. How long would you continue to develop for Intel-based Macs? When the hardware transition is completed in two years, the development for Intel-based Macs will quickly wind down, and that Intel-based Mac will be quickly forgotten and left behind. And what will happen to the resale value? Who is going to buy an Intel-based Mac? Who wants to buy into a dead platform? Your resale value on that Intel-based Mac will be next to nothing. My advice? Don't invest heavily into a dead platform unless you can afford it. If you do, just know that in a few years, it won't be supported and no one will want that Intel-based Mac. Then again, I guess you could always hack the bootcamp drivers to run the latest version of Windows, just like I did with my 2009 Classic Mac Pro. To wrap this up, I think Apple Silicon for anything with a battery for mobile devices is going to be a massive change for the better. I think iPads and MacBooks are going to be amazing right from the start, and in five years, nothing will come close to them. The performance per watt advantage and optimization of hardware and software will be segment leading. However, for the desktops, I see them behind Intel and AMD in absolute performance, and it will take them five years before they can really challenge them. Like it if you learned something, share it, subscribe for more. Here's an interesting thought. How many Apple ARM cores will it take to beat Threadripper in Cinebench? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next one.